This video demonstrates how to set up and perform x-rays of the skull, facial bones, and paranasal sinuses. In this video, the first radiographic projection will be described in full and subsequent projections will be described briefly, highlighting the differences only. Equipment required includes the following. An upright bucky or table bucky. 8 by 10 inch cassettes. 10 by 12 inch cassettes a protective lead shield for the patient, an x-ray generator and x-ray tube housing assembly, a control panel located behind a protective lead barrier, a computer radiography system. Radiographic projections of the skull may be undertaken with the patient recumbent on the radiographic table or seated upright. For an AP axial projection of the skull, first position a 10 by 12 inch cassette lengthwise into the upright bucky. Adjust the height of the image receptor for an average sized patient and set the source to image distance, or SID, to 40 inches. Angle the x-ray tube caudally 30 degrees. Turn on the collimation light and center the central ray to the image receptor. Select the upright bucky setting and the small focal spot on the control panel. Set the exposure parameters to between 65 and 70 kilovolts, or KV, and 50 to 60 milliampere seconds, or MAS. Place a seat just in front of the upright bucky and ask the patient to sit with their back towards the image receptor. Proceed to place a protective lead shield on the front of the patient's waist. Align the mid sagittal plane of the patient's head with the vertical line on the upright bucky. Ask the patient to keep their arms by their side, with their hands and forearms resting on their thighs. Depress the patient's chin to align the orbital meatal line perpendicular to the image receptor. Center the central ray to the mid-sagittal line 2.5 inches above the glabella. Confirm that there is no rotation or tilting of the head and ask the patient to hold the position. Collimate to the outer margins of the skull. Position the left lead marker on the patient's left side on the upper corner of the bucky and within the collimated field. Position yourself behind the protective lead barrier. Check that the exposure technique is appropriate for the patient's body habitus and make any necessary adjustments. Instruct the patient to remain still and to hold their breath during the exposure. Expose the cassette by pressing the prep button. Then, when ready, press the exposure button. Once the exposure is completed, inform the patient that they may relax and breathe normally. Process the cassette and proceed to the next projection. To perform a lateral projection of the skull, first adjust the exposure settings. Position a 10 by 12 inch cassette crosswise into the upright bucky. Ask the patient to sit with the affected side of their head towards the bucky. Rotate the body and neck obliquely to position the lateral aspect of the affected side of the face against the image receptor. Place a lead shield over the patient's reproductive organs. Turn on the collimator and align the central ray perpendicular to the image receptor, two inches above the external auditory meatus. Align the mid-sagittal plane of the patient's head so that it is parallel to the image receptor and align the interpupillary line so that it is perpendicular to the image receptor. Ensure no rotation or tilting has occurred by palpating the center points of the nasion and the external occipital protuberance. Adjust the image receptor to the central ray. Check that the front and back of the skull are included in the light field. Adjust the collimator to include the outer margins of the entire skull. Position the left lead marker on the upper corner closest to the front of the head within the collimated field. Instruct the patient to hold their breath. Expose and process the cassette. To perform a PA axial projection of the skull, adjust the exposure settings and position a 10 by 12 inch cassette lengthwise into the upright bucky. Angle the central ray to 15 degrees caudad to exit at the nasion. With the patient facing the bucky, fit a lead shield on the back of the waist. Place the patient's nose and forehead on the image receptor. Depress their chin to align the orbital meatal line perpendicular to the image receptor. Align the image receptor to the central ray.
check that the mid-sagittal line is perpendicular and that the mastoid tips are equidistant to the image receptor and confirm that there is no rotation or tilting of the head. Collimate to include the outer margins of the skull. Position the lead marker. Instruct the patient to breathe in and hold. Expose and process the cassette as previously. To perform a PA projection of the skull, adjust the exposure settings and ask the patient to remain seated facing the bucky. Rest the patient's nose and forehead on the image receptor. Position the orbital meatal line and the mid-sagittal plane perpendicular to the bucky. The patient's chin may need to be depressed to achieve this. Align the glabella to the center of the image receptor. Check the mastoid tips are at an equal distance from the image receptor. Doing this ensures that there is no rotation. Align the central ray to the mid-sagittal line on the posterior aspect of the skull to exit at the glabella anteriorly. Ensure the image receptor is aligned to the central ray. Collimate to the outer margins of the skull. Position the right lead marker on the patient's right side. Instruct the patient to breathe in and then hold their breath during the exposure. Process the cassette and then analyze the images obtained. To image the facial bones using the lateral projection, set the KV to between 60 and 65 and the MAS to between 10 and 15. Set the SID to 40 inches. Ask the patient to sit with the affected side of the head towards the bucky. Ensure the lead shield is correctly placed. Position the patient's body obliquely so that the shoulder of the side being examined is towards the image receptor and the opposite shoulder is raised. Align the mid-sagittal plane of the patient's head so that it is parallel to the image receptor and align the interpupillary line perpendicular to the image receptor. Check that there is no rotation or tilting of the head. Center the central ray to the zygoma, the prominence of the cheek. Collimate the light field to include all sides to within one inch of the facial bones. Position the lead marker. Instruct the patient to breathe in and to hold their breath during the exposure. For a Waters Method Pariah Canthial Facial Bones projection, adjust the exposure settings and position the patient to sit facing the image receptor. Fit a lead shield to the back of the patient's waist. Extend the patient's neck and rest their chin on the image receptor. Check that the orbitomietal line is at 37 degrees to the image receptor and align the acantheon with the center of the image receptor, ensuring that there is no rotation. Line up the central ray to the mid-sagittal plane to exit at the acantheon. Collimate to include the outer margins of the facial bones. Instruct the patient to hold their breath and expose the cassette. To perform a PA axial projection of the facial bones, adjust the exposure settings and seat the patient so that they are facing the bucky. Position a lead shield to the back of the patient's waist. Align the mid-sagittal plane of the patient's head so that it is perpendicular to the image receptor and ensure that their nose and forehead are resting on it. Position the orbital meatal line perpendicular to the image receptor. Center the central ray angled 15 degrees caudad to the mid-sagittal plane to exit at the nasion. Collimate to the outer margins of the facial bones. Position the right lead marker on the patient's right side and within the collimated field. Instruct the patient to hold their breath during the exposure. Analyze the images obtained. To perform an axiolateral oblique projection of the mandible, use a KV between 60 and 65 and MAS of 3 or 4. Set the SID to 40 inches and angle the central ray 25 degrees cranially. The patient can be positioned either seated upright or supine. For the upright position, seat the patient facing the bucky. Position the patient obliquely with the shoulder on the affected side touching the image receptor. Place the patient's face with the ramus in the true lateral position against the image receptor. Align the central ray to the area of the mandible being examined and collimate to all sides. Expose and process the cassette. To obtain a PA projection of the mandible, adjust the exposure settings and ask the patient either to sit upright on a stool or lie prone on the table as demonstrated here 
with the forehead against the image receptor. Place a lead shield over their reproductive organs. Position the mid-sagittal plane and the orbital meatal line perpendicular to the image receptor. With the central ray perpendicular to the table, center it at the mid-sagittal plane, exiting at the level of the lips. Collimate to the margins of the mandible. Position the marker and expose and process the cassette. Review the images. To obtain a submento vertical full basal projection of the zygomatic arches, first set the KV to between 60 and 65 and the MAS to 3 or 4. Sit the patient slightly forwards and facing away from the upright bucky. Place a lead shield over the front of the patient's waist. Gently position the patient with the top of their skull against the image receptor. Raise their chin and neck until the infraorbital meatal line is parallel with the image receptor and ensure the mid-sagittal line is aligned to the center line. Center the central ray midway between the zygomatic arches and one and a half inches inferior to the mandibular symphysis. Align the image receptor to the central ray. Collimate to the outer margins of the right and left zygoma. Ensure that the patient is steady in this position. Instruct them to hold their breath during the exposure. To obtain an AP axial projection of the zygomatic arches using the modified town method, set the KV to between 65 and 70 and the MAS to between 30 and 40. Angle the central ray 30 degrees caudally. Sit the patient with their back toward the image receptor and with a shield over their anterior waist. Gently position the patient so that the back of the skull touches the image receptor. If required, tuck their chin under to bring the orbital meatal line perpendicular to the image receptor and ensure that the mid-sagittal plane of the head and body are aligned with the center line of the image receptor. Check the mastoid tips to confirm no rotation has occurred. Direct the central ray to one inch superior to the glabella and collimate to the outer margins of the zygomatic arches. Position the left lead marker and expose the cassette. Review the images. For a parietoacanthial projection of the nasal bones using the Waters method, first adjust the exposure settings to between 60 and 65 for the KV and set the MAS between 40 and 45. Position the patient to sit facing the image receptor and ensure that a protective shield is correctly positioned. Extend the patient's neck and rest their chin on the image receptor, making sure that the head is not rotated. Align the mentomeatal line until it is perpendicular, or check that the orbital meatal line is at 37 degrees to the image receptor. Center the central ray to exit at the acantheon in the mid-sagittal plane. Collimate to include the nasal bone and surrounding facial bones. Position the lead marker and expose the cassette. To obtain a lateral projection of the nasal bones, ask the patient to sit facing the image receptor. Rotate their head so that the affected side is closest to the image receptor. Align the mid-sagittal plane of their head so that it is parallel with the image receptor and the interpupillary line is perpendicular to the image receptor. Ensure that there is no rotation or tilting of the head. Align the central ray to the nose, half an inch inferior to the nasion. After aligning the image receptor to the central ray, collimate to the outer margins of the nasal bones. Expose and process the cassette. Assess the images obtained. To obtain a parietoacanthial projection of the orbits, adjust the KV to between 60 and 65 and set the MAS between 40 and 45. Position the patient to sit facing the image receptor and position the protective lead shield. Align the mid-sagittal plane, extend the neck and rest the patient's chin on the image receptor. The orbitomeatal line must form a 37-degree angle with the bucky. Ensure there is no rotation of the head. Center the central ray to the mid-sagittal line to exit at the acantheon. Collimate to all outer margins of the orbits. To obtain a parieta orbital projection of the orbits using the Reese method, adjust the exposure settings and position the patient so that they are facing the image receptor. Ensure a protective lead shield is in place. Align the patient's mid-sagittal plane 53 degrees to the image receptor. Position the patient with their chin, cheek, and nose resting on the image receptor. Ensure the acanthomeatal line is perpendicular to the center of the image receptor.
Line up the central ray with the center of the orbit closest to the image receptor. Align the image receptor to the central ray and reconfirm the patient position. Collimate to include the orbital region. Expose and process as previously. Review the images obtained. To obtain a lateral projection of the paranasal sinuses, set the KV to between 65 and 70 and set the MAS to between 10 and 15. Ask the patient to sit with the affected side of the head towards the bucky and to rotate their body and neck, bringing the side of their head against the bucky. Position the shield on the posterior waist. Ensure that the mid-sagittal plane of the patient's head is parallel to the upright bucky while the interpupillary line is perpendicular to it. Center the central ray to a midpoint between the outer canthus of the eye and the external auditory meatus. Collimate to include the frontal bone, external auditory meatus, and the occlusal plane. Expose the cassette. To image the sinuses using a PA axial projection, adjust the exposure factors. Ask the patient to sit facing the bucky and position the lead shield. Raise the chin slightly so that the patient's orbital meatal line is 15 degrees to the horizontal central ray and ensure that the mid-sagittal plane is perpendicular to the bucky. Center the perpendicular central ray to the mid-sagittal plane and to exit at the nasion. Collimate to the area of the frontal and maxillary sinus cavities and laterally in line with both mandibular rami. Expose and process the cassette. To obtain a parietoacanthial sinus projection, Adjust the exposure factors and position the patient facing the image receptor. Extend the neck so that the patient's chin rests on the image receptor and that the orbital meatal line is aligned 37 degrees to the image receptor. Check that the acanthion is aligned with the center of the image receptor. Align the central ray to the mid-sagittal plane and to exit at the acanthion. Collimate to include the frontal and maxillary sinuses. Expose and process the cassette. To obtain a submento vertical full basal projection of the sinuses, remember to adjust the exposure factors. Position the patient facing the x-ray tube and gently extend their head until the back of the skull rests against the image receptor. Check that the infraorbital meatal line is parallel with the image receptor and align the mid-sagittal plane to the center of the image receptor. Center the central ray midway between the mandibular angles and 1.5 to 2 inches below the mandibular symphysis. Align the image receptor to the central ray and collimate to include the symphysis menti anteriorly and the mastoid tips posteriorly. Expose and process as previously. Review the images.